just wrapped up a fabulous Sunday morning service. Yes, it was an amazing service today. And I mean, as you can tell, you might be able to hear people yes. in the background, but we were just very inspired and we figured we'd start talking to you guys right now. Right. We shared testimonies, had different testimonies from people in the congregation and pastor just exhorted us. And Cam, you exhorted us so beautifully about the power of God. And so today what we want to do, we're still talking about the power of your testimony, the yes. power of mine, yours. We have a testimony and it has power in it. And you'll hear pastor talk about the three elements of, of our authority and the power of our testimony and committing our life to God. But we thought this is a service worth sharing on Wednesday night. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those that everyone has a testimony and everyone has a story. And we talked about how our testimony in the past weeks, how our testimony encourages us right. and encourages others. And it just shows the power of God moving. And so these testimonies just share that. And what Pastor shared is just so apt for the series that we're doing that we wanted to share it with it you. It is. And I was so encouraged by the testimonies this morning. And Cam, I'm sure you were too. And it encourages you too. The power of my testimony and these that you're going to hear today, you should be encouraged that if God did it for someone else, he will certainly do it for them. Absolutely. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he did it for someone else, and as we talked about in past weeks, he's no respecter of persons, which right. means he doesn't play favorites. He doesn't no. pick the ones he loves and like forsakes the other. Right. Like he loves everyone. And so he will do it for you yes, too. Yes, he will. And you will also hear that we have some participation in that by speaking, by believing. You're going to hear beautiful truths from God's word. So we're going to break away right here and share some of these testimonies with you. Enjoy. How are you guys doing today? So it's funny because Pastor Fred and Cindy asked me to do my testimony, and as I was talking with uh, Pastor Cindy about it, how testimonies have so many aspects to them, and there's so many things that happen in our lives, and the testimony changes based on who you're talking to and what they're going through in life. And my testimony isn't very unique in its, in its telling of it, because a lot of people have experienced what I have experienced, and that's the thing that I love about it, is that it's not unique but what I've gone through, so many have gone through. And to know the pain I've gone through and to see where I stand now just speaks of the power of what God can do in someone's life. Because there's a lot of things that have happened in my life that, like I said, have happened to many people. One of the things when I was really young, I was sexually molested for a number of years. Now that happened when I was about four or five to the, about the age of seven. Now that's 18 years that have gone by that I have not been. So I don't identify as someone who has been sexually molested. That's not my identity that I take on. But it's something that has happened, and it caused a lot of trauma and a lot of pain and a lot of things that I didn't realize I had to process through. Growing up, I was bullied a lot, picked on. And so I started to take on the identities of what people called me and got beat up a lot. And then when you smart off to the people that are beating up, like beating you up, you get beat up a little bit more. Um, and so I've gone through those things. A little bit later in my life, my parents got a divorce, and my parents were pastors. And so for me, the idea of divorce was like forbidden. Like that wasn't even an option on the table because, like, in the Christian church growing up, I didn't even think divorces happened. Nonetheless, it didn't happen to like pastors. And so that was another thing that led to feelings of abandonment and being forsaken go forward a little further in my life, and I just felt like my family was falling apart, and I started turning to other things for comfort. Now, I didn't go to drugs or drinking, but it was definitely, when I was in high school, I was like, well, I'll just find someone to fill that place, and so I started dating constantly and trying to find someone that would fill that position in my life, because I was like, well, someone will eventually fill that, and it'll feel right, and it'll feel good, and that all came to a collapse when I dated seven girls in one year, and I was like, I, none of them are making me happy. And so I just kept kind of spiraling down, and thankfully during this time, even while I felt like I was spiraling through so many things, God held so close in my life. Fast forward a number of years, and all these things that have transpired in my life that I never processed through, that I never learned to deal with. Because the funny thing is, in high school and grade school and growing up, nobody sits you down and it's like, hey, let me teach you how to process through pain. Let me teach you how to process through trauma. Those things that happened to you weren't your fault. And so during college, a lot of those things started coming up in my life. And God started dealing with certain things. 
and I just kind of pushed them back and ignored them. And so it was about a number of years ago, about two or three years back, when all of a sudden all those emotions started hitting hard. Like I couldn't repress them anymore. I couldn't push them back anymore. And all of a sudden depression started coming in to the point where I almost committed suicide. And the only reason I didn't, because I saw a semi coming down the street and I'm like, I'm just going to pull out in front of this and it'll be done. And the only reason I didn't is because I was in my mom's car at the time. And I was like, oh, I can't leave her without a car. And <laughs> at that moment, it wasn't a matter of, I thought I, was doing some, I thought I was doing something that was going to help other people. And that's the thing, is that the devil and the enemy gets into you so much, and they want to go over the things in your past, and, oh, you were sexually abused. Well, that's your fault. You should have stopped it. You should have known better. I'm four or five years old. I don't know better. And there are so many people that even when they're sexually assaulted when they're older, start taking that on, and they're like, oh, that was my fault. I didn't. No, that wasn't your fault. Someone did something against you. If you got bullied growing up, if you had identities pushed onto you, that's not your identity. God has not called you that. But the enemy starts putting these things on you and he starts making you believe them. And so depression was hitting heavily. And it got to the point where because I was like, well, I, I can't kill myself because that wouldn't be the right thing to do, I started getting very anxious and started having anxiety attacks. And I remember growing up, I was just like, what are anxiety attacks? Like, what are they? Oh, people just get like a little bit nervous and like they just freak out, whatever. But no, it's not a whatever. I started getting anxiety attacks to the point where I'd be trying to fall asleep and all of a sudden I couldn't breathe. And I would literally be trying to struggle to breathe for 30 minutes. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop freaking out. And it was just such a dark place where I did not feel any sense of hope. Now I want to pause real quick. I'm standing here right now and I love my life. I cannot tell you how great my life is. I just got married to the most wonderful woman in the world, and I love my life. I have a number of jobs that I absolutely love and adore. I love meeting with my coworkers. I love meeting with my mentors. There are people that I mentor now. I love my life. And I say all this, and I said my story is not unique. My story is not something that is just Many people have gone through sexual assault. Many people have been bullied. Many people have, have been suicidal or gone through depression and anxiety. And what I'm here to say is that God is greater than all of that. And what I had to get to at one point in my life, there's a story in the book of John, and I love it because it's in John chapter 5, and Jesus command, uh, meets with a man at the pool of Bethesda. And the reason I love it is because of what Jesus ends up saying to the man. In John 5, verses 5 and 6, and it's not going to be on the screen, so you can just uh, listen with me. A man was there, and he had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? And this was something that hit my life. Do I wish to get well? And some translation says, do you even want to? to get well. Now, it's kind of a harsh question to ask someone who's been lying on a mat for 38 years, almost four decades of their life. That is the identity they have held to. And I was in this kind of position in my life where I was holding on to all these identities because I truly believed that I was the issue, that I was the one that had been. The reason I was sexually assaulted was it was my fault. I was bad. I was gross. I was just terrible. And I had taken on all these things. I was a depressed person. I was an anxious person. And God just kind of at that moment said, do you even want to get well? Because it's hard to get well. You have to process through pain, and sometimes it hurts. But God is greater, and he will walk you through it. He is a wonderful shepherd that will lead you to still waters. He will make you to lie down in green pastures, and he is so gentle and wonderful. And I finally, when getting through all of it, I had one of my friends say, like, that's not a believer. They're like, and you believe in a God and you worship this God that made you go through all of this. And no, I do not worship a God that made me go through all of this because my God did not make me go through this. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It was not my God that put me through these things. Sin entered the world and the enemy has a field day with it and tries to destroy the people of God before they have a chance to fully develop, before they have a chance to step into their destiny, before they have a chance to see what God is going to do in and through their life and to be able to proclaim it. And so what I can stand on 
is that in Romans 8.28, it says, and we know that in all things, God works to the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So what the devil meant for evil, my God can work it for good. What the devil meant to destroy me and cause me to end my life, well, he failed and the Lord stands supreme. And I can tell you that my life is not unique. What I went through is not unique and I'm not downplaying it. What I'm saying is that all of you, have pain. All of you have gone through trauma. And what I'm saying is that the same God that was there for me is there for you. If there is something going on in your life, there is a God who loves you. There's a God who sees you. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible is when it's Hagar and she feels forgotten, abandoned, cast out. And God comes and visits her and she calls him El Roy, the God who sees Your God sees you. Do not feel abandoned. Do not feel forsaken. Do not feel forgotten for he sees you. And that is my testimony. It's not anything I did special. It wasn't anything that was unique that happened to me. What was unique was the God who I worship, the God who is living, not dead. So many people proclaim a God and a deity and fall into all these religions and their leaders are dead. Their founders are dead. But my God was raised from the dead and he is living in me and he has restored me to a place where I can proclaim his power. I didn't go through a physical healing, but I went through a spiritual healing. I went through emotional, I went through mental healing, and it is that God who has healed me, and he is here to heal you today. If any of you are going through that, talk to the pastors, talk to those in leadership here. We will pray for you. We will be here with you. We will talk you through it because we know that our God brings healing. And we talked about how this is a year that's going to be marked by miracles. And my God, the God I know, he healed me from all this and he can heal you too. If he is a God, the same God yesterday, today, and forever, then he can do what he did for me and he can do it for you. And that is the God we worship for him to overcome. I want to just share a few scriptures today, and we're talking about the power of our testimony. And of course, from uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11, very powerful truth here. It says, and they overcame him. That is the enemy, which represents every stronghold, everything that's wrong, everything that oppresses or tries to bring death or destruction of any kind. And they overcame him by the what? The blood of the lamb. There's three things mentioned in this scripture about being an overcomer. They overcame, number one, by the blood of the lamb. Number two, by the word of their testimony. And number three, and they did not love their lives to the death. In other words, their lives were committed to Christ. So they overcame in three areas. The blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. Now I want to talk about, notice the very first thing is the blood of the lamb. Thank God for the blood. Where would we be without the blood? That's where the power comes from. And you notice, you notice it says the word of their testimony. Did you know that the blood, that blood speaks? Blood has a voice. There's a, there's a scriptural law, a spiritual law, that's called the law of first mention. And and the way that law works, anytime something is mentioned in the entire Bible for the very first time, there's a spiritual significance to it. When you see a word like, for example, grace, the first time grace is mentioned is that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so it reveals a powerful truth. And guess where the first time we see blood mentioned in the Bible It's mentioned in Genesis chapter 4. Let's put that scripture up. Genesis chapter 4. First time blood is mentioned, there's a a powerful truth, a revelation that leads us into the rest of the scriptures. The Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Of course, you know, if you know the scriptures, that Cain killed his brother's, murdered his brother Abel. And so drop down, next verse. It says, and he said, what have you done? God is speaking to Cain. What have you done? And he says, the voice, God says, the voice of your brother's blood, that's Abel, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Abel's blood was poured out because of Cain's murdered him. And Abel's blood had a voice. It was crying. It was speaking and crying out to God. What was it saying? More than likely it was saying, vengeance, avenge me. 
and his blood has a voice. And so by the law of first mention, we know everywhere we see, now we see that blood speaks. Did you know even today in our modern day technology, many crimes that have been solved, that have been cold cases for many years because of the DNA technology with blood? They can open a cold case and where, and where there's evidence and find blood, and now because of DNA, they, they solve crimes. Because even now the blood speaks. And I want you to know today that the blood of Jesus, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is speaking right now on your behalf, on my behalf. His blood, come on, was on the cross poured out for every curse, every sin, every burden of our entire lives. And the blood of Jesus uh, uh, was, was, is put on the altar seat. Did you know that the blood in Jesus' body when he was raised from the dead, that he had no more blood in his body when he was raised? We know he had blood in, prior to that, divine blood, but when, he, when his blood was shed, after he was resurrected, before he went and ministered, he first, the Bible says, ascended, and all of his blood is put on the heavenly mercy seat. At this very moment, the mercy seat in heaven, the blood of Jesus is all over it. Right now. And that blood forever speaks to those who receive. And the blood of Jesus speaks to you and I, and it declares if you believe in him, if you acknowledge him, if you receive him, and all that he's done, the blood of Jesus is speaking for you that you are forever forgiven. Amen. Your sins have been put away. Hey, <laughs> forever. You are forever made righteous. Right standing with God, the blood declares. That's why even when you fail and the enemy says you're shamed, you're condemned, how could you? You have no future. You say enough already and you hear the blood saying, my blood has been poured out. They are loved, they are forgiven, they are clean. And they are made right before me. Amen. The blood speaking continually on our behalf, his blood. Thank God, Mike and Dee, they didn't know everything, but God began to teach them and they began to understand that the blood speaks. By his stripes, you are healed. You are made well. Praise God. And so we can hear the blood of Jesus. As I said earlier, thank God for all the hospitals and medicines and all that they can do. And we, we believe in that and God can use that. But sometimes nothing else can help is in the case of, of D. And the blood speaks and declares, by his stripes you are healed. Praise God. How many of you know before Jesus went to the cross, he stopped by the whipping post? He could have bypassed that and just went to the cross. But before he went, he stopped by the whipping post and he allowed himself to be tied up. And the Roman soldiers in those days, and they had the, their whip, cat of nine tails and, the, and glass and, and, and uh, bones and sharp objects were on that, on that whip. And they put stroke after stroke after lash after lash. Somebody said they, they put 39 lashes. 39 lashes was the way of the Jews. The Romans had no guidelines. Who knows how many stripes and lashes they put on Jesus' back and flesh and blood torn. And why? And every stripe says, you are healed. You are well. You are made whole. And the blood of Jesus is speaking even now, saying, receive that. You are, for, you are healed. You are made whole. Praise God. I said, glory to God forevermore. Amen. The blood speaks. Pastor Mark, would you come and share a, a, a brief testimony? This is testimony time. Could we get a microphone for, for Pastor Mark? Because uh, I, I heard you share a testimony, Pastor Mark, last, last Sunday, that when you were just a young man, a teenager, and newly saved and trying to find your way with God, but you experienced something powerful. Why don't you just sh share yeah, that Yeah, I'll share a brief testimony. Uh, I grew up in the church, and we loved God, but as a kid... I suffered from migraine headaches, uh, sinus headaches, very severe. I don't know if anybody had a migraine headache mm -hmm. before to where you're nauseous and you cannot function. 
Right. And my dad would take me to the Raider games, and by halftime, my head would feel like it was going to explode. I'm about six, seven years old kid, and uh, and and I couldn't function. Well, Mama ended up taking me to the doctor. And the doctor says you have severe sinus issues, right. and and that's why you're having pressure headaches at a young age. You know, at those days, I. We'd watch Medical Center, and I'm thinking I got a tumor on my brain or something, you know, because I was a hypochondriac. <laughs> but um, but uh, anyway, to make a long story short, um, when I turned 16, uh, a spiritual mother of, of both my best friend at the time um, took us to a, a little church. Thank God for Word of Faith Church. Yeah. And... Uh, Anyway, uh, she took us in and had a little meeting, and uh, the pastor there was teaching on healing. My head was, was pretty much about to explode. Didn't really hear anything he was saying. I was just, let, you know, I was hurry up, let's get this over so I can t- go home and go lay down. And then before he closed out, he said, anybody want to come up for prayer? And so, you know, again, I'm just a little 16-year-old 16 16 kid. I go up for prayer, Pastor Fred, mm-hmm. and uh, never experienced this before. I was a believer, loved the Lord, got saved, you know, at age of 12. But anyway, so he, he, he stands on a few people, and then he gets to me, and then he goes, uh, what are you here for, Brother Mark? And I said, my head's about to explode. I mean, and, and my nose was so stuffed up, couldn't hardly breathe. And so he just starts praying. And then he, and I remember him saying something like this, Pastor Fred, he just got to me, and then he said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Then he kept saying, you know, and he said it about six times, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. Yeah. About the sixth time he said this, listen to me, there was a wind. I'm not exaggerating. There's not no overfertile imagination, yeah. okay? <laughs> mm. I was on the ground, just like that, hurt the wind. My nose, every headache, everything yeah. went instantly. Wow. Listen, it went instantly. Yeah. And I never experienced that before. And so I'm on the ground, and I get up. My head's clear. My, my sinuses are clear, Pastor yeah. Fred. Wow. And I'm sniffing. I can breathe. And I, I don't know what I look like in front of everybody, but I say, I can breathe. Yeah. Oh, the headaches left. Yeah. I went around that little church. <laughs> Didn't care what I looked like. Yeah. Walking, leaping, and praising God. Amen. Do you understand? And, and, and I want to just say this. I want to, I want to say this. It's one thing you say, well, I know the Lord is real, but after that, no one can ever talk no, me out. Talk I, didn't, I never testimony. experienced that before, Fred, right. Pastor yeah. Fred. Right. And so, get, and, and, and to tell into this story, uh, I never had an instant healing in my life. I didn't even know, yeah. you know, I read it in the Bible, but, you know, I, I couldn't say it was all on my faith because I was just, I was in. Right. Anybody said, listen, I'm just going up, hope, hope, hope something happened. Yeah, yeah. I just need some relief. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm breathing. And then I went and got some books. One was by Fred Price called How Faith Works. Yeah. And I took that and I, 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 I read it. And then I went home. Then the next day, sniffles started coming back. A little bit of the sinus pressure starts coming back. Mm. And I began to feed myself on the word of God, on how faith works. Yeah. And I began to use, I found out I have authority. Yeah. And so I began to say no in the name of Jesus, Satan, you can't put that back on me. Yeah. Now listen, it took two days, me battling that, resisting that. The second day, it went away completely. Yeah. And that was it. For good. For good. Yeah. Praise For the good. Lord. Isn't that beautiful? For good. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Yeah. Well, those were some awesome testimonies, and it was just an awesome, like, message by Pastor Fred and even Pastor Mark's testimony. Wow. It's just God is great, and it's not any ability of our own. It's nothing of ourselves, and that's what's great about a testimony is it's we're bragging on God because yes. it was nothing, even in my own testimony, it was nothing that I was able to do because from apart from God— I was stuck. I felt trapped and helpless, but God. Right. And, you know, Cam had mentioned that people were very quiet while he was giving his testimony. And I would assume it's because people didn't know those things that happened to you. And so to the one who was sitting here or maybe there or there, they're, they're like, 
that happened to me. I've been through the same thing. Your testimony gave them hope. And I actually had a number of people come up to me afterwards and were saying that I had been through similar circumstances or I have had the same thing happen to me. And yeah, it's very difficult for a lot of people because I, because of what God has done in my life, I can talk freely about it. Mm -hmm. I have been set free from that bondage, from that weight, that feeling where I feel trapped and I feel like I can't talk about it because it's just a lie. But when I talk, the power of God moves yes. and people are set free, not because of anything I did. Like I said, I'm not special. I'm not unique, but the power of God is. And because yes. of that, people recognize that's where I've been and I can be where he is now. Yes. And even when we heard Pastor Mark tell uh, his, his testimony about how it went whoosh, like a wind, you know, some testimonies are just this gradual healing where the Bible says you will recover. That's a beautiful testimony. Other times it's that whoosh thing that happens and Wow, I'm so impressed by God. Yeah, and I've, I've said often that I'm very glad that for me, that God didn't do like an instant whoosh, like you know, that mine took time, that he helped me process yes. through it. Because now God has given me the tools that if something happens in my life, I know right. how to deal with it in a healthy way. I don't have to go back to that bad at coping mechanisms or unhealthy mindset, but I have been set free. I have been delivered and it is because he walked me through it. Yes. I remember a time in my life when I I asked the Lord, why don't you just heal me instantly of this pain? It was an emotional pain. And he said, because if I did, you'd end up right back there again. Because like you said, I wouldn't have had the tools. Yeah. And so he knows what's best for us. He knows what's best for you. And we pray that you are encouraged by these testimonies and know that you have power in your testimony. Yes. And we're excited to see what God is going to bring in the upcoming series and the further episodes of just the power of our testimony is so unique and wonderful. And like we mentioned in past weeks, it's something that other people can't discredit. They nope. can't discount it because it's the power of God working in our life. It is right. our own testimony. It's our own story. It's our own personal experience and no one can negate that. Right. So and next week, is gonna, you're going to be so surprised the testimony we present to you next week. But until next week, keep declaring God's word in your life. Keep declaring his goodness. Keep declaring your testimony. And if you are struggling with something in your body, look to the word, look at what you're saying, and remember the blood of Jesus avails for you. Yes. We love you. Have a great we week. Do. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.